I've said it before and I'll say it again. The world is a mess. Recently, North Korea launched some test missiles off the coast of South Korea to simulate strikes on South Korea and the US. The exercise may have included a possible failed intercontinental ballistic missile or ICBM. Today we're looking at the reclusive country North Korea. Whether its nuclear warheads can reach as far as the US and how much damage it would cause. We'll also look into the curious car industry in North Korea and whether it holds a chance against Kia and Hyundai. A few weeks ago in November, North Korea test-fired multiple missiles and artillery shells into the Sea of Japan, also known as the East Sea. South Korea announced that it found parts of at least one of these North Korean missiles near its coast. That was actually the first time in history that a North Korean ballistic missile had landed near South Korean shores. But this wasn't the first report of North Korean missile testing this year. Nuclear-armed North Korea has been testing missiles all year, but that most recent mass missile launch in November included the most test-fired missiles launched ever in a single day. If you're wondering why North Korea launched these test missiles, evidently it was a simulation conducted in response to Vigilant Storm. Vigilant Storm is an annual event. Basically, it's a joint training between the U.S. Air Force and some of its allies in the Asia-Pacific region. It's a four-day training exercise involving hundreds of aircraft. The thing is, the North Korean military views Operation Vigilant Storm as an open provocation aimed at intentionally escalating tension. It also views the war drill to be highly aggressive, in line with persistent war hysteria. That's why it responded by conducting simulations of attacks on air bases and aircraft. Diplomats in the U.S., South Korea, and Japan condemned North Korea's test and called it as reckless. But here's where things start to get a little sticky. The North Korean military said that on November 2nd, 2022, it fired two strategic cruise missiles towards the waters off Ulsan. Ulsan is a southeastern coastal city in South Korea that houses the nuclear power plant and large factory parks. North Korea even released photos of the said launch. But South Korean officials claimed that it had not tracked or found any missiles in the Ulsan area. It didn't trust the North Korean photos either. In fact, some analysts said the photos looked like they were recycled photos from earlier 2022 launches. But it's not just that. North Korea also said that it launched two tactical ballistic missiles that were loaded with dispersion warheads and a special functional test warhead that it said would paralyze its enemy's operation command system. North Korea also said it carried out large-scale all-out combat sortie operations involving 500 fighter jets. The thing is, releasing 500 fighter jets means almost every dedicated combat aircraft in North Korea's inventory. Yet many North Korea fighter jets are 40 to 80 years old and are far from serviceable. North Korea is not known to have any new warplanes since the early 2000s. That's why many believe North Korea's 500 fighter jet figure is an exaggeration. North Korea didn't stop there. The General Staff of North Korea's People's Army, or KPA, accused Washington, D.C. and Seoul of eliciting more unstable confrontation in the region and said that if the U.S. and South Korea continue to provoke North Korea with these drills, the North Korea would counter these events with more practical measures. So here's the question everyone is wondering. Are North Korean's threats valid? Here's what some experts say. North Korea's recent test of its Hwasong-17 ICBM appear to indicate that North Korea is developing a missile with multiple nuclear warheads that can target the U.S. Some even believe that this new monster missile is the largest road mobile ICBM in the world. The latest missile launch reached an altitude of 3,700 miles, blew for 69 minutes, covering a distance of 620 miles before it landed 130 miles off Hokkaido in northern Japan. Bruce Bennett, a senior advisor analyst at the RAND Corporation, believes there were two reasons why North Korea is developing its own new ICBM. It allows North Korea to potentially reach any part of the U.S. with a weapon that's estimated to weigh 1,102 pounds or more. It also gives North Korea something to use as an intimidating threat. If you're wondering how powerful the Wangsong-17 ICBM is, let's put it in perspective. The earlier Wangsong-14 had a maximum range of around 6,213 miles. It can easily reach the U.S. west coast. The Wangsong-15 has a range of just up to 8,700 miles. This means it can reach any part of the U.S. mainland, even the most eastern coast. And the current Wasong-17 reportedly has a maximum range of at least 9,320 miles. Ankit Panda believes that the Wasong-17 could be a test bed for a post-boost vehicle that's used in any sophisticated multiple warhead payload. A post-boost vehicle is also known as a bus. Basically, it's a ballistic missile payload that contains multiple independently targetable warheads that can each be guided to strike its own specific different targets. Because of that, 
intercepting this warhead isn't easy. Also, because of its size, some nuclear analysts believe that the Wasong-17 could potentially carry one or even several large warheads. But for now, the Wasong-17 ICBM is still considered to be at an early stage of development. True, a Wasong-17 was reportedly test-fired on November 2nd, but according to Joint Chiefs in Seoul, apparently, it was a failure doing an engine ignition problem in the second stage, after which point the missile fell in the Sea of Japan or the East Sea. Now, I say apparently because in a statement released by North Korea after the test, this failed ICBM test was not even mentioned. So, for now, the Wasong-17 is far from operational due to reliability issues with its manufacturing components and quality control. So here's the question. If North Korea were to attack the U.S., would it be able to stop it? John Kirby, National Security Council Strategic Communications Coordinator, says that the U.S. has been concerned about North Korean provocations for a while. Because of that, the U.S. has added intelligent capabilities off the Korean Peninsula to better understand North Korea's behavior. Ian Williams, Deputy Director of the Missile Defense Project, said that the recent test launches were the most significant exercise by North Korea so far. But that's not all. The White House even went so far to warn that Pyongyang could immediately conduct a seventh nuclear test if they wanted to. But if that were to happen, Lloyd Austin III, the Secretary of Defense, and Lee Young Sup, South Korea's Minister of National Defense, affirmed that the U.S. South Korea alliance is ironclad. If North Korea were to launch ICBMs against the states, military analysts believe that the U.S. can not only retaliate against the attack, but even intercept or stop the attack and minimize the damage. Here in the states, we have something known as ground-based mid-course defense system. This is the lone U.S operational homeland defense system against nuclear attacks. The system includes 44 interceptors in states like Alaska and California. But here's the thing. The National Bureau of Asian Research found last year, despite ongoing U.S. investments, factors like technical shortcomings, limited oversight, and a poor record of testing casted significant doubts on the U.S.'s ability to defend against nuclear missiles from North Korea. 2017, General Mark Milley, chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, said that the U.S. would utterly destroy North Korea if it attacked the U.S. with nuclear their weapons. But later in 2022, General Malay said that North Korea posed a real threat with its nuclear and ballistic missile programs. So you can see things have changed. According to one report, North Korea recently entered its most intense period of missile testing ever. Some analysts estimate that North Korea might have enough material for over 100 nukes. And while military analysts today are confident the U.S. can intercept a single North Korean missile, on the other hand, intercepting 100 of them is a different story. By the way, did you know that former presidents like George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump repeated attempts to bring North Korea to the table to discuss denuclearization? But none of them were successful. Here's the thing. In this modern age of globalization, North Korea is really an odd man out. If you imagined every country in this world as kids in a playground, North Korea would be that super odd, mysterious child that plays mostly by himself and just a few others in secret. The truth is, North Korea is an impoverished nation. And while its own people suffer, it pours out its money into the military. Believe it or not, North Korea is the fourth largest army in the world. North Korea has 1.21 million troops. That's around 4.7% of the country's total population. If you think 4.7% is small, it's not compared to the U.S. where 0.727% of our population serves in the military. That's not the only conundrum. Not many people know this, but North Korea has its own timeline. They don't follow the same timeline as Western countries do. North Korea's calendar starts with the year 1912. That's because North Korea's founder, Kim Il-sung, was born that year. Even though we're going into 2023, North Korea is only going into the year 112. Despite global sanctions against North Korea, its missile program and GDP are still growing. Now, technically, North Korea doesn't make its economic information public. But data released by Trading Economics and the World Bank showed the country's GDP at $18 billion by the end of 2020. And it showed that, at least up to the same year, the GDP had been growing each year. Even so, North Korea's GDP pales in comparison to South Korea's. The World Bank found that in 2021, South Korea's GDP was $1.8 trillion. So if you're wondering what North Korea's largest exports are, its main export is coal. According to some estimates, coal brings over $370 million a year in illegal shipments. In 2017, in a bid to comply with UN sanctions, China announced it would end all coal imports from North Korea that year. But even so, a confidential UN report later reported that coal was still being delivered to China via ship-to-ship -ship transfers. Back in 2021, BBC interviewed Kim guk -sung, a man who had defected from North Korea. Before he defected, he sold rare metals and coal for North Korea for millions of dollars. And he actually carried loads of cash back to North Korea in a suitcase. North 
Korea also exports clothing. Actually, there's a lot of controversy around this. It's rumored that North Korean clothing gets relabeled as made in China before it gets exported from China to other parts of the world. So think about the next time you buy clothing that's made in China. But look, I'm a mechanic at heart, so let's talk about cars. If you're wondering if North Korea makes its own cars, well, the car industry in North Korea isn't private or public. It's actually a branch of the national economy. But compared to South Korea, it produces a lot less vehicles. That's because in North Korea, vehicle production is focused towards military and industrial goals. But the North Korean car market is nowhere near able to compete against Asian counterparts like Hyundai or Kia, let alone Toyota, Honda, Mazda, or Nissan. The 1970s, 1980s was a period of relatively good economic development. North Korea, and so it imported many cars from abroad. That's why you can find American, Japanese, and German cars from those decades on North Korean roads. You can also find luxury car brands like BMW, Lexus, and Mercedes-Benz too. In North Korea, they also have wood-burning vehicles. It's true. Because of strict international sanctions, oil is not easy to import to North Korea, and so they've improvised, and they have some vehicles that are fueled by wood. Did you know that owning a car in North Korea is a status symbol? There are only a little over 300,000 cars in North Korea. That's that's not much when you consider the population is almost 26 million. Given the average annual salary there, it could take over 20 years to afford a private car. And if you ever saved up enough money to buy a car in North Korea, you'd still need to be eligible for the right to own one. North Korean law stipulates that the owner of a private car must be an employee of a state-owned enterprise or a government official. Scientists who made outstanding contributions to North Korea, university professors or athletes who've won championships in major international competitions, can also get private cars donated to them by the state. Diplomats and foreigners working in North Korea can own private cars in North Korea without restrictions. But now you tell me, do you think North Korea's threats are valid? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.